You are listening to the Daily Wealth Junkies show. I'm Brandon Dukeman here with Will Harvey, and this is the Wealth Junkies. And today is Multifamily Monday. Thanks for joining us, everybody. First, before we get started, don't forget, subscribe to the show so that way you're not missing any of our Multifamily Mondays and any of our daily episodes. And also join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash Wealth Junkies. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Will to introduce our really exciting guest for the day. Thanks, Brandon. Today on the show, we have Chris Roberts. So he's an entrepreneur. He owns and has started several businesses. Uh, He started this all at a young age. Currently, he owns a company called Fusion Sales and Marketing, which does over 24 million in sales annually. And he's also very focused now on building long-term wealth. And he's doing that through none other than multifamily real estate. So he started a syndication company, called Sterling Rhino Capital, which we're going to talk about uh, all of that. And he also owns some personal real estate. So with that, Chris, you got an awesome background. I'm really excited to dive into it. Thanks so much for coming on our show. Can you just give the listeners a little bit more about your background and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, thanks, Will and Brandon. I appreciate the opportunity to be on Wealth Junkies. This show's right up my alley. A lot of fun and and energy. Yeah, you guys rock. Um, So, so, a little story about me. I, I, I'm an, an average young person who, you know, probably went through the struggles and challenges that young people go through, you know, uh, kind of lower, lower, I guess, lower middle class family. Uh, my mother and father had me at a really young age. And, and that's probably where there's a little bit of a differentiator. Mm-hmm. Um, they were literally 15 years old when they had me. Uh, we had wow. good support system outside of them, you know, a, a couple aunts and uncles and, and things of that sort, but we didn't really have that normal, what I would call normal, I guess at the time, family structure. So at a pretty young age, I, I started to move around a lot and didn't really have a sense of, of what family and home uh, and even like self-worth was because right. mom was really hustling and working and dad wasn't around much. And I just kind of had to fend for myself. I grew up in Southern California and after, after living there for many years, uh, started, uh, getting beat up by gangs and just, you know, around the wrong element. And it was just kind of a scary environment. And, Mm -hmm. you know, when you're, when you're, when you're growing up in that environment, you, you, and the reason I point this out is it it teaches you things that you just can't really learn in life out of a book. You have to experience them. And I don't recommend that for anyone. I don't want them to have people wouldn't want to get beat up by a gang to learn (laughs) an experience, but you know, right. I'm, I'm a glass half full guy. Uh, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that thinks about the universe around the glass. I'm outside the glass. Like I don't want to think about the glass half full. I want to think beyond that. So even during those challenging times, the way I got through that stuff was, was just to try and focus on what I could control. And I know it sounds silly because I was pretty young at the time, but that mindset is what helped me the rest of my life. And as I met mentors and had opportunities to work around professionals, I really gravitated towards them and then just built upon the success of that mindset. And I know Tony, Tony Robbins talks a lot about mindset and changing your state and all that. And he's right. And when I listened to him, I've been to his seminars many times, uh, likewise others, it just really hit home with me. And I thought, man, that is exactly how I got through a lot of the challenges. So um, just to fast forward through my youth, I got jumped several times by gangs I would literally have to, I did this cool little, like a 13 minute video on fear I put on YouTube and it talks about that whole scenario growing up and then, and then eventually becoming successful in life. And I talk about how I was avoiding, you know, uh, gang bangers on the way to school. I was avoiding bullies at school and I was avoiding drug dealers on the way home from school. And it's like, what, what a life just to get. Yeah. yeah, You're literally, your whole life is in fear. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. And, and, my thing is that there are a lot of people around the country that have this fear. They, they have, whether it be as a youth or it be as an adult or a significant other, we all have these fears and challenges, but how do we reframe that fear? How do we change it and use it to empower us and, and build strength so that we can then go out and achieve anything we want? Because it's a very fine line between us, let's say the ones that are fearing, and the successful people out there that appear to not be fearing right? It's a very fine line. Yeah. And it could be one moment in your life that changes that significantly. And so for me, as I grew up, I really started to cut my teeth out there, just learning and, and focusing and surviving. And I believe early on, that's where I started to develop my sales skills, even though at the time I didn't know it. And so I'll tell you this kind of funny story. As, I, as I'm milling through life, I end up on my own at the age of 15 years old. So my parents had me at 15. 
And my mother moves me out of Southern California because of all the trouble and violence and stuff down there. Right. And I move out on my own at the age of 15 years old. And I lasted about, I don't know, six months before I was homeless, right? Just, just trying to figure it out, just trying to make it. And when I say homeless, I don't mean literally living on the streets for years at a time. But there were many times where I would sleep in a park or I would just hustle to sleep on couches. I mean, couches and couches and couches. That's and as I'm man. working a few part-time jobs, um, you know, I, 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 I was working at Wendy's. I was installing car stereos. Um, How I old was, were you? Uh, working at a tanning salon. I, I was 17, 16, 17 years old, wow. right around that age. Yeah. And I mean, it, the list goes on and on. I got all these sub stories. But to keep us focused, I just on, on all these stories, I could tell you, uh, so I'm, I'm hustling all these jobs and this, I meet this guy outside of a hot dog cart. Okay. And people laugh. And actually at the time my friends laughed, they said, you know, oh, a hot dog cart, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, I go to work for this hot dog cart and I'm making, I think at the time it was $1,600 a month, which was more than anyone I knew. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm slinging hot dogs hot, and hot. I'm making tips. Oh, tip. okay. Tips. I, I was yeah, going to yeah. ask how, making, how are they paying you so much? Yeah, yeah. Well, they were paying me, they were paying me a salary. I was working six days a week and I was working like, you know, eight, nine, 10 hours a day, depending on the time frame. So I worked a lot of hours, yeah. but it was a salary. So it was really good money, six days a week. Wow. And then I was getting tips, right? And so here's where the story kind of starts to get a little interesting and how I start to really develop my entrepreneurial spirit. As I'm hustling, this guy approaches me and, and I tell this story throughout my life with people. Um, he comes up and he says, you know, um, you know, are you happy here? I said, well, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm wearing an apron. I got sunglasses on. Everything's good, right? I'm a hot dog guy. Like, of course, why wouldn't I be happy? And uh, he says, I got to have a guy like you in my organization. And I'll fast forward through it. Basically, he says, um, you know, I've been searching for people to work in my new organization forever. And I can't find people with the energy, the passion, just the natural ability you have with people. He said, it's just, I just haven't seen it out there. I've, I've tried. And I really need a guy like you to come work for me and, and I can teach you. I can teach you how to do spreadsheets. I can teach you how to be a manager, supervisor, whatever. But, but I can't teach that natural ability, that attitude, that energy that you have. It just draws me in. And I'm like, wow. well, what are you selling knives door to door, man? Like, who are you? Like, right. what are you talking about? I'm a hot dog guy. Like, you want to hire me? <laughs> are you kidding me? Like, what do you want to hire me for? That's hilarious. What I hadn't realized at the time, man, yeah, is that, is that it was that energy and that attitude, that enthusiasm that drew him in and, and that, would, that would serve me well later in life. So at the time, I thought maybe he was just a door-to-door -door salesman. He, he, he asked me what I need to make. Oh yeah, back and forth, I thought I'd never see him again. Uh, two days later, he comes back and he offers me what I wanted plus you know, benefits and other things. So I leave there and I go work for him. Well, this guy ends up being the most key figure of my entire life. He, He's my mentor. He teaches me. He gives me books, how to win friends and influence people. Wow. He makes me and the other supervisors go through line by line and study, you know, hey, what did, what did this line mean to you? What did this chapter, how was this chapter? And he really, he taught me, someone who really didn't have a father figure around, didn't have any guidance. He really taught me uh, the value of education and hard work and grinding. And, uh, and then just to fast forward a little bit more, I worked for him sometimes sometimes over a hundred hours a week out at his properties. I would work at his, he had a fun center. I would work at his fun center. I'd work at his properties. I worked more hours than I thought my body was physically able to work. And, and that guy completely changed my life. As a matter of fact, I forwarded the book to him and his wife, thanking them for what they did for me That's and really completely cool. changing my life. That uh, is awesome. Yeah, and then we'll, we can just leave there and I can take off on some other so topics. But that's, quick... that's where I am about 18 quick kind of unrelated question did he buy sure. a hot dog from you the first time he met you uh oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> nice yeah, yeah. And, and let me let me just side little caveat so what's funny is this owner owned two hot dog carts and he made very good money at these hot dog carts he was an entrepreneur as well and he had these these sausage dogs the guy would drive like five hours to get these things <laughs> people love him i am not kidding you we'd have 50 people lined up out in front of a gi joe's at the time which is like a you know outdoor store store to eat a hot dog and you're like that's crazy wow. but they did they wow. did that's and, wild yeah and it's yeah. partially because you were the guy selling them too right i don't yeah. know man maybe yeah. i got nice tips that was great yeah. <laughs> yeah that's good stuff that's awesome yeah so yeah that no that's and that's all but you're 18 at this point right yeah i'm 18 at this okay time. that's okay. incredible so you get you get started that that's incredible that you were just able to 
have that opportunity come up. And I think it's, uh, we, we were talking to somebody recently and they were just talking about how a lot of times in an entrepreneur's journey, there's a lot of luck involved, but that luck is because you put yourself out there and you put, you know, you set yourself up for that opportunity and, and then it just happened. So it sounds like you did get a little bit lucky with that, but I'm sure it's because you were the way that you were, you had your background and that's what got you to, to where you are with the people skills and, and all that. And like the guy said, that's un, unteachable or uncoachable. Yeah. And well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one little yeah. nugget as it relates to that comment you just made is I didn't know it at the time, but the only thing I had, and there's so much more to my backstory, but the only thing I had that I could control was who I wanted to be, you right know, on. who I envisioned, who I, who I would be, not, not who people thought I was or how they looked at how I had no money. I worked in a hot dog cart. I mean, I, I, let me tell you this. I lived in a house at that time. Okay. With a, with a, with a guy who I've never done a drug in my entire life. I've just against it. I've never done it, never tried anything. But this gentleman that I was living with at the time I found out was on drugs. Right. And we lived in a two bedroom house that was falling apart. It was a $400 a month house that had a hole in the bathroom floor. You could see through the floor. Wow. We had mold around the fireplace. It was cold. We had no heat. It was a horrible environment. And I'm working at a hot dog cart. I mean, it was, it was not a good situation, man. Right. But my attitude was though I was living on the hill. And, and what's ironic is, is I didn't know that at the time, but that's what got me this opportunity with this mentor who completely changed my life that's and propelled cool. my success. Yeah. yeah. And then actually shortly thereafter working for him, I bought, I rented the house on the Hill moved my family in and we were all on our way. <laughs> it was great. Very no cool. Kidding. But, that, that is cool. You know, that shows that's, that's like one of the only things that can't be taken away from you is, yeah. is your attitude and, and your mindset towards your perception. Yeah. Your perception. I mean, you, you know, you can have your house taken away from you. You can have, you know, people you care about, everything like that, and you know you're by yourself. But your attitude and perception is definitely one of those things that you, like you said, it's the only thing that you could control. And I think that's absolutely. Huge. Yeah, that that's so good. So where what going forward from there? Once you got started with that guy at his company, what was the progression after that? Yeah. So he he mentored me through the process, taught me a lot about being a supervisor and, and building forms and spreadsheets and just a little bit of understanding a little bit about accounting and things of that sort. And, uh, and then I started to get a bit impatient. Uh, I worked for him for almost three years. So into 2021 and really just kind of wanted to explore, uh, I guess, expand my horizons. And so people were kind of coming to headhunt me, prospect me, whatnot, bring me, bring me along in their business and wanted me to become salespeople for them. So I, I approached him and asked him, Hey, you know, I, I'd really like a raise. I, I'm thinking about this, thinking about that. And he said, Chris, you know, I'll be honest with you. I could give you a raise. He said, we keep you here forever. But I think you're, he, he said to me, I think you're wasting your talent staying here because wow. you know, true. yeah, he said, he said to me, and I, I actually wrote this, I wrote this. He said, um, you're wasting your time because I think your true calling is becoming a sales professional. And that's okay. crazy to me because to me, he was like a father figure, right? I, I thought, mm. what are you talking about? Like, I thought I'd be here forever. And he said, look, as much as it'd be hard for me to let you go and for you to go and whatnot, trust me when I say that I think there's some great things out there for you if you just take the chance and just pursue it. And so he had the foresight to see that in me, which was just amazing. And he did when he hired me, which again, is just, it's that crazy divine intervention. You're like, how did this guy come into my life? Right. He knew all the right times to say the right things. That's amazing. And yeah. And he pushed me out and I struggled I, at first. This company I went to didn't do what they said they were going to do. I, I didn't make a lot of money. I was working a bunch of part-time jobs again and I struggled. I mean, you know, I think people oftentimes will tell these great success stories and they don't tell you that you do get kicked in the teeth a lot you know, but, but you have to have the attitude that that's just part of the deal. Being kicked in the teeth right. should be just natural. And then you push yourself back up and get, and get going again. Right. So I go out and I, I pursue other sales careers and eventually land on my feet in a furniture store. And that's really where my, my sales career elevated and, and really went, went to the moon. Um, I got in with a furniture store, started selling, uh, I have some really funny stories about when I first started and stumbled along. Again, it was just sheer will, just like being at the hot dog cart, just reading anything I could get my hands on, watching all the really good salespeople and trying to understand what is it that makes them successful? What are the, what are the exact words they say? How do they close a deal? What does that mean? And, uh, and as time went on, I got to a point on the sales floor where 
they would bring me in to actually close these protection plan deals because wow. I was really, really good at it. And you made more commission on that stuff. So uh, I found that I was actually making more money sometimes than the top writer because I was getting a lot of the protection plan business, which had a higher commission. So I started to build these strategies. And early on, along with Ron's mentoring, it got me think, it, it's almost, it's, it's weird. The, way I, the best way I could describe it is almost looking at the matrix you know, you see all these numbers and you just see all these lines and you, and some people get caught up in all that. Uh, Stephen Covey calls it getting caught up in, in the thick of thin things. You know, you just get, mm. you get bogged down by stuff. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I could just see, I could see things in the sales world and I could get through the BS and I could just really focus on what I needed to do to earn someone's business and just understand what they were looking for and quickly get there so that I could get to the next customer. And that's how I really excelled my sales career. Do you think that's a natural skill set or do you think that's teachable? I think it's teachable to a certain extent. Someone has to be open to learn. And what I mean by that is, is I train thousands of salespeople all the time. Okay. I mean, I, I train lots of them. Some of them I've taken from very poor sales to extremely good sales. And then others I've taken to, to good sales, great sales, and then they drop off. And, and you ask them the question, why did you drop off? Right. You have the ability. Like what happened? Well, I forgot or I got lazy or I just, I didn't ask or I whatever, right? So as much as someone may have it in them, do they have it in them to, first? Do they have it in them? If they do, you can teach them almost anything, but can they hold on to it? Can they sustain it? That's the key. And that's, that's the key in entrepreneurship and success that's in it. general, right? How do you keep the momentum going? How do you surround yourself with people that will nudge you along almost like bumpers on a bowling alley and keep you going the right path because it's so easy for us to just go back. One last little nugget on that. And again, I think it was Tony Robbins. He probably took this from someone else, but they talk about how we were born to survive and not to succeed. And, and if you think about that, that is so true. Like we, we aren't born to succeed. Like there's no, you don't come out of the womb. So like, yeah, I'm just going to go out and become, you know, mm. Richard Branson. I just, this is going to be great. No, you, you kind of come out and you go, well, I got to eat. I, I need to have some shelter. Got to have some clothes. And, you know, that's okay. Oh, that guy's got a nice, that girl's got a nice car or something. Maybe I'll get one of those or whatever. There's, there's yeah, not a lot of Maslow's, natural ambition in people. Maslow's right? hierarchy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's really good. But yeah, so, so after, Brandon, you were about to say something. No, I, I was just, I, I'm, Listen, I love hearing this. This is just, this is awesome. So yeah, that's uh, good stuff. Can I, can I talk to us a little bit how you got into the real estate world and, and you said you rented out the, the house on the hill there. So I'm sure, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, going from the $400 rent house to, to living on the house on the hill kind of maybe inspired you. A yeah. Little let's bit keep to, the, keep the progression yeah. going. I love yeah. this story. <laughs> yeah, man. No, let me tell you. So, so here's another thing um, throughout life. And I mean, when I was young, I would borrow clothes from friends that had nice clothes because I didn't have them. And, and I wanted to be like that, right? I wanted to, I wanted people to look at me like I had nice things and that, that I was worthy of whether it be their friendship or hanging out or whatever. So throughout my life, I was always trying to create, it wasn't a facade because I had it in me. Like I was a good person. Right. But, but, but people didn't look at you that way right. when you were young. Right. They were, they were so judgmental and they, you know, I mean, I got made fun of, I got picked on cause I was fat. I was ugly. I was whatever. Right. So, so I had to kind of create this, Hey, I'm not that guy, you know, I'm this guy. So as I started growing in life and I, and I, I got this job with this guy who opened my eyes to all this opportunity and I, and I ended up renting this house on the Hill. I thought, you know, why can't I own a house on the Hill? So I asked the may the mayor actually owned that house. And I asked him, is there anything I can do to fix this house up, help you on the weekend, anything I can do to earn maybe a way to buy this house someday. And he actually offered me that opportunity. Now, this is not a, a, a fairy tale story. I didn't buy this house, but I was fixing the walls for him. I was doing all these things. And then he came to me one day and said, Chris, uh, you know, I want to sell you this house. He said, this house is worth, it was say 175,000. It was a beautiful house on main street on the hill. Okay. He said, but you're going to have to come up with $20,000 because I'm going to sell it to you for, it was, it was $120,000. He's going to sell it to me well under market value. Wealthy, older guy, had a lot of property. And here, here was the reality check. So I go down there with my mom. We didn't have the credit. We, we, didn't, have, we didn't have the wherewithal. We didn't have $20,000. How on earth were we going to do anything? I got this house that's below market value. And at the time, I just didn't have the resources. I didn't have the people around me. I didn't have the heart to go and beg or ask my boss the time or whatever. 
So I missed the opportunity, but it was actually a learning opportunity, right? Because I realized, wow, you, you know, you have to have something in life. You have to have a couple bucks put away because opportunities will come your way. And if you don't have anything, you're not going to be ready to take advantage of those opportunities. And I'll tell you a story in a few minutes about how I actually later on did take advantage of another opportunity that was incredible. Um, but that was a lesson for me. And I really, really wanted to buy that house, but it just inspired me. It didn't, it didn't push me back or push me down or deter me. And what I found is because early in life, I had nowhere to go but up, like literally nowhere to go but up. Everywhere I looked around, everyone was above me. That's the way I felt at least, right? right. I mean, yeah. I, I was like, where else am I going to go? You know? Um, so for me, I was inspired by people's success. Now, and I mean that today. When I meet an entrepreneur who's wealthy or has a bunch of stuff, I am genuinely interested and I love hearing their stories. I love that they're successful. I love it's, that they That's have- why we're doing this show. Yeah, so we exactly. can, we can, you yeah, know, if it yeah. doesn't inspire anybody else, it inspires me. So, you know. Yeah, to- no, totally, right? It's like, hey man, if someone's got a billion dollars, that's awesome. Some people look at him and say, well, you're just a rich, wealthy billionaire. No, but you know what? Every billionaire, most, most billionaires, millionaires, they're charitable. Right? Right. You know, guys, I spent a ton of money getting my book launched. I will never make money on that book. That book had nothing to do with making money, Mm -hmm. right? That book had to do with making a difference and and enriching people's lives and telling the story and, and, and building some hope in people and all that. A lot of people out there that have money or have done things, it's because they care. They're out there trying to build a a, a future for their family. They're giving back to charities you'll never hear about. And so I think that's the, that's the misnomer out there is like, at least for me, yeah, I've had some success. I'm, I'm not really technically wealthy. I mean, I guess technically I'm rich if you want to look at statistics or whatever, whatever that means, right? These days, right. But, but that doesn't mean anything to me. All it means is I got a roof over my head. I'm extremely thankful, extremely grateful. And now I have the opportunity in life to give back. And I am very passionate about that. Mentoring people, you know, helping young people, awesome. inspiring. Yeah. Anyone could call me anytime. My clients call me at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock on a Sunday and they're going to get me. Wow. And, and we will, we will, I will help them with their issues, their problems. One of my mentor uh, students, I don't charge. I just have a handful of mentor students I help. They call me on a random time. I know they need me. I answer the phone or I call right back. Yeah. Because that's what got me here today was was listening to people constantly and being there for them. So, that's that's so cool. I love that, that. that that whole men finding those mentors is just crucial for you know somebody young starting out and and I know it was for me and I would not be anywhere near where I am today and I have a lot to go. I don't think it, I think I've reached uh, really anything yet, but. Uh, with with that said, where I am today would 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 not have happened without having those mentors in my life that I was connected with. That that really, I, I don't know if this is the case for you, but every time I hear someone's story that's achieved success and, and, and done some awesome things, it's like it breaks the ceiling off of what I thought was possible and what I thought I was capable of. And now it's like, well, well man, I need to. I need to shoot even higher because it's been done before. Somebody can, if, if somebody can do it, then, then I can as well. Why not? Why not me? Why not us? So, yeah, there's no doubt. You know, before, yeah. before I go into explaining the rest of the story, um, you know, I, I want you to think about something. It's, it's funny there, there in, in life, you know, we, we, we focus a lot on the challenge ahead, you know, all the what if or this person, or that's going to be so hard. And, and I see this in my everyday life with friends or family or whoever, it's so easy. The first thing out is, yeah, did you hear this about so-and-so? Or, you know, oh yeah, yeah, I can't do that. Or that's challenging. You know, and I'm always telling people, how about the first thing out of your mouth is, I'm going to do this. And I know this sounds silly, but it's like, tell yourself. When you face adversity or challenge, not, oh man, that is, that's gonna be tough. No, how am I gonna methodically and systematically break this thing down so I can defeat it? so I can win, how I can get past it. What, how, what systems do I have to put in place? And I'm gonna give you one nugget to, to think about. Um, I actually typed this out because I have this in my head, but it's easier for me to just read. So I ask people all the time, they'll tell me I don't have time. How do you have time, Chris? How do I have time? Because you're watching Game of Thrones reruns right. for 20 hours a day, okay? And I'm, I'm on the computer from eight o'clock till midnight. Darn near every night if I'm not working out on the road or whatever, right? Sundays, yep. same thing. You're watching football for 10. I'm not saying you guys, man. I'm just saying some people, right? No, I know. Well, yeah. I'm, we're Redskins fans, so watching hey, the games is 
It's yeah, the worst. I, I know. It's a waste I get of time it. anyway. It's sacrilege, right? <laughs> no, no, I get it. I get it. Don't get me wrong. I watch a little football. But the bottom line is that I'm working. I usually have a laptop up. Mm -hmm. And people go, well, how do you? Oh, that's not fun. Like, how do you? It's work. No, no. I love this stuff. Exactly. I love it. I'm passionate about it. Like, knocking out a spreadsheet or grinding on some numbers, doing some research. So here's what I did for, for some of the people that I've mentored. I said, look, here's what I want you to focus on. I want you to take your day and I want you to break it down. I want you to go six and a half to seven hours for sleep. Okay. Cause that's really all you need. Yep. If you're getting more than that, you're wasting time, right? Uh, two to two and a half hours for self-development. Okay. And implementation of ideas. So two, two and a half hours a day of ideas, education, podcasts, whatever it is you're going to do. Right. Uh, nine hours of work. Maybe you work seven, eight, nine hours, however yep. many hours, one hour for relaxation, whatever that means. Um, whatever that means. That's right. Don't worry Sorry, about guys. it. And no, then, and good. then three hours it's of family talking about work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. No kidding. There's another client three hours, uh, three hours for family, one hour for sustenance, uh, and one hour for your body or working out. Now I know this sounds insane. Like, well, wait a minute. What are you talking about? I'm not going to, I'm not gonna do that. I need two hours to eat you know, or my workouts an hour and a half, you can make all the excuses you want, but if right. you don't have guidelines and set yourself up for success, you're never going to do it. You're not going to stick with it. And Amen. so what I tell people is believe in the purpose and the vision, critical time management, give and do for others and you'll achieve success. And these are just some of the little nuggets that I work on when I'm talking with people, but it's because they don't even know how to manage their own time. Right. Mm -hmm. They're just busy making excuses all the time. Right. Yep. They're busy being and, and busy. Busy being busy, right? And so I yep. say, look, if you're doing this, you're probably putting 10 times more of the time into educating yourself and building yourself up so that you can then pursue the dreams you want. And a lot of people say, well, I don't have money. I, I can't go open a business. I can't go. You know what? If you were smart with your money, you could save a little money and then you could use that money to invest in the things that you want to pursue, which is one of the things I do now. Right. And I'll tell you, when we get to this point, you guys can just remind me of it. I'll talk to you about what I save and how I invest and allocate uh, the way that I've, I, I, the way that I bring in income and, and just the way I look at money, uh, which is really important as you make money, the way you look at it and the way that you, the, the, the way that you shouldn't be. Well, why don't, while we're on the top, while we're on the subject, why don't you tell us about that? Okay. So let's talk about that for just a second. First and foremost, I didn't, I made money just like anyone else did four seventy five an hour when I was young. You know, I, I didn't have a lot of money and people would say, well, how are you going to save $10 a month when you only make, you know, $50 a month or whatever? Right. There is always a way to save. I mean, you have to pay yourself first. And again, Tony's really good at this, but a lot of people talk about it. Yeah. Uh, you have to save. So I got to a point where I was able to save 40 to 50% of my income. Okay. Wow, that's and impressive. When, yeah. Thank you. And, and that's only because, uh, I would drive, like, I'll give you one example. I drove my Lexus for 12 years. Okay. Now I bought a Lexus because I'm on the road a lot and I, and I needed a reliable vehicle. I didn't like the way it looked, but I bought it because it was a smart decision to buy a vehicle that would have low maintenance. I drove the car for 450,000 miles, give or take. Wow, okay. Crap. Yeah. 12 years. And people was all my friends that I knew out there, not my close friends, but people I knew out in circles, driving Porsches, driving nice cars, always buying new cars every two years. And the way I looked at it was, it was an ATM machine. Money was just flying out of that car constantly. And I yeah. thought, how am I ever going to get anywhere if I keep buying the new car? I want a new car. So fast forward, what did I do with the savings of that vehicle? Well, I took those savings and I actually bought a piece of real estate, which then turned around and returned me several hundred dollars a month in cash flow with appreciation and debt pay down, obviously. And you know how the numbers work. Uh, today, if you look across my portfolio, all of my real estate cash on cash performs at just above 20%. And that's wow. cash on cash return, right? Oh, now, that's because I bought my single families and my duplexes and things right and I did value add and I paid attention and I put some cash down, not a significant, but I put cash down and I did all the things that set me up for success. And what's funny is the books I read said, oh, if you get a hundred dollars a month in cash flow, you're in great shape. And I thought that's crazy. Yeah. I go bankrupt if the recession hits or something. Right. right? But they all said that hundred, 150, because they want you to buy into the programs. Right. And I said to myself, I've got to make 300 properties. If I can make 300 a property, that would, that would put me in a position to be able to lower my rents if I had to or make adjustments or whatever. Right. So I did that. And from day one, my first property was like 301. The second property was like 296. My focus was built around 
the numbers I needed to hit and not built around what someone else told me or right. what I thought, right? Yeah, you um, do what's, what's best for you. Yeah, so, so back to the savings and the money stuff. So I have currently, I paid cash for my Lexus 2012, has a salvage title. What do I care? It's a car I drive constantly. It's a $12,000 vehicle. It's worth probably 25 or 30. I paid 12 for it, right? Yeah. No payments, okay? Maybe I drive it into the ground for five or six years, but I've had no payments and I can salvage it for parts for a couple grand, yeah. okay? No payments, no interest, no nothing. My wife's car did the same exact thing, bought her a beautiful Lexus salvage title. What does she care? We're gonna drive the cars for seven, eight years. So what do we, why do we care? A lot of people get focused on, I got a new car, I can't have a salvage title because right. they don't know anything about it, yeah. right? Um, the, the, the spending. We're in, we're in check with our spending. We don't, we don't carry debts. You know, we invest in, in lots of different things. Real estate, I'm a partner in a software company. Um, we're always diversifying. And the way I look at it is that if I'm, if I'm spending, I want a return on that spending yeah. unless it's a Christmas gift Amen. or something like that. Right? Yep. You got to buy assets and not dumb stuff like Porsches and watches and all that yeah. nonsense that people focus on. Yeah, or pay cash for it if you get yourself into a position where you you want to you know give yourself a treat or whatever. Yeah, advice, go for it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not not judging people. Believe me, when I first started making money, I went out and bought a Rolex, man. Okay, I went out and bought a Rolex. I had the thing for like a year and a half. I was making like sixty thousand dollars a year. Total idiot. What am I doing with a Rolex? Are you kidding me? I can't even afford to maintain this thing. Right. right? So I turned around like two years later and I sold it and only lost three hundred dollars. Thank goodness. And it was a wake up call. I was just trying to keep up with the Joneses. And uh, you know, the one little quote, I'll tell you, you that, yeah, one little quote that I learned, and it's a satisfied need no longer motivates. And I think that was another Covey quote. Mm, and that quote stuck with me forever. That's, a satisfied need no longer motivates. Wow. That's, that's yeah. very true. Ed. Yeah. It, that's it, really it, good. And, yeah. And then you got to kind of figure out what else you need and what else is going to motivate you after that. And that's kind of how you continue to grow. Yeah. Stay yes. hungry. You know, once that need's satisfied and you get nothing else that you're looking to do, you know, that's, that's what, right. What do you have? Next? So, yeah, exactly. So, so Chris, um, continuing with your story, where did you take that, that company once you, once you started it and then, and then talk a little bit about how you got into multifamily and just what you're doing with that. Sure. So as I started progressing through my sales career, uh, making a little bit of money, I diversified a bit. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm able to, to represent lines as long as they don't conflict with the other lines that I carry and whatnot. So whether it be like, you know, doing a little financing or a little protection plan or whatever it may be. So I was able to diversify and pick up some things. Uh, some people don't want to hustle and don't want to work the extra to do that. But for me, I looked at it as an opportunity to put money away for retirement and whatnot, right? So I started building up a stock portfolio. And at that time, I, I owned my own primary residence, but hadn't really gotten into real estate. And sat down with a friend that was a real estate guy. And we had this conversation on a napkin in a, in a Las Vegas restaurant at a convention. And he was pitching me on real estate and the concepts of cash flow and all of that. And I'm talking to him about stocks. And what was really funny is by the time we were done, I folded up the napkin, I put it in my pocket. And I told him, I'm going to buy my first property in the next six months. And he's like, that's great, right? I got home. I bought five real estate books. I read those, three, those five real estate books in about three months. And by the fourth month, I had, I had my first property under contract. Wow. And it was an, yeah, it was an REO. It was a you know, bank flip type of thing. And it was a fix up, you know, whatever. I bought it for $99,000, okay? Wow. And to, to not get too much into the weeds on the real estate part, by reading the books and analyzing the spreadsheets and putting together my own, I, I, I touched on it a little bit with the 300 a month thing. I figured exactly what I, out exactly what I needed to do to be successful in this business. And if I could execute my plan, I could succeed. And sure enough, that first property I did, and we, we, I think my tax mortgage insurance on that property was like $578, okay? Because I put 20,000 down, I did some renovations and I rented that house for like $1,100 a month. Okay. Wow. So even after CapEx and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So that was my first taste. And I was like, this is crazy. I, I can't believe I, I wasn't doing this before. Right. Yeah. And so then I went and right down the road, I bought another REO for a hundred. Uh, first one was 99. I think second one was a hundred within thousand dollars. Bought another one did the same thing. And, and the way I was able to do it, by the way, that, fir that first one was Lexus money. <laughs> I had saved all my payments. <laughs> right. So as I owned that Lexus, I kept uh, saving funny. those payments. Right. So then I took that 50,000, 25,000 in renovation. 
renovation, 25,000 down. And then I was able to sell that house a few years later for like $170,000. So I made a nice profit plus all the cash flow off of it. Yeah. Then I multiplied that, multiplied that, multiplied that. So I kept getting into the single families and I would do it on part time. So I'm gonna tell you, it's funny. People will say to me, well, how do you do all this? How do you work? How do you have all these businesses? I would go to my job during the day, eight o'clock to three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon, depends on what happened, what was going on. I would have my trailer behind my Lexus with all my tools in it. I would drive out to the property from say five o'clock to 10 o'clock at night and I would work on the property. And then I would come wow. home, park my trailer, take a shower, get up in the morning, do my reports and I would go do it again. And I did that for six weeks on my first property right? Yeah. Along with some temp people. And they're like, well, did, did you have construction experience? Nope. I had YouTube. Yeah. I didn't have construction That's experience. Yeah. I mean, seriously. It's and so, so you can learn anything. Just, just, but if you don't try, if you don't go in there and fail and stumble and hurt your finger, yeah. and like maybe hire some people that know, and you, it takes an army to have success. It's not just you, but you are the pinnacle. You're the one, the spearheading the concept, if you aren't leading, right, like a general and out there hustling and trying, people aren't going to follow you. And if, right. and if you are, then people are going to go, what is that guy doing over there? Oh, real estate? What? You know? And so now, like for me, I love sharing any of this stuff with people because it teaches me as well as, as, I'm, as I'm teaching, I'm learning as well. And, and, uh, and you're building relationships and things like that. And so fast forward to real estate, I, I, I did several of those. Um, I once bought a property. Uh, again, this was that opportunity. I'd been saving. Family member approached me. Uh, a family uh, or a good friend of hers had a property that was uh, in the rears on taxes. And all she wanted was her taxes back, but you had to pay cash for it, right? And get this, guys. I bought a house at the time that was worth at least, sight unseen, probably 120, 125,000. I bought it for $50,000. Wow. And, but, but this was the cool part as the economy's grown in about three years, that 50,000 turned into 270,000 on, on just that property. Okay. That's incredible. Now, yeah. And all I did is put flooring in and a roof. So it was maybe like $12,000 or whatever. That's unbelievable. Yeah. But if you didn't save and you didn't put yourself in the position and you weren't right. telling people what you do, nobody, you know, nobody would have even forwarded the opportunity to me. Um, so that's exactly uh, right. Yeah. And if you weren't set up, like you missed that opportunity early on in your career, because mm -hmm. you just didn't have the, um, you didn't have the capacity to close on it. And it sounds like you don't have that problem anymore. No, I'm yeah. good. I'm yeah. Good. Yeah. But that's I, great. I also sacrifice, man. Like I don't roll around in Ferraris, right. and, you know, and, yeah. and no offense, but I just, I well, want to put my stuff in assets, man. I love yeah. it. Everybody's vision of or not everybody that's a blanket statement but a lot of a lot of people um their their vision of rich people that are rich and wealthy and all that is nice cars and watches and bling bling and you see those guys that sell those courses and seminars and all that crap and they're getting out of their rolls royce and they're it's probably rented it's probably not theirs and you know they're they're kind of pitching that whole private jet and, and all that stuff because yeah. that's what sells what doesn't sure. sell is saying you need to buy assets because <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, and, and, and to me, and it sounds like it is for you too, that that's so fun to me to be able to create. I yeah, I know. It's like people ask me my hobbies. I'm like, I don't know. I don't really have any. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, this is yeah. it, man. Yeah, I have exactly. hobbies, but I I'm so excited about all of this business stuff that I right. don't have time to go scuba dive or go right. golf or go exactly. do whatever. I've got all the stuff in my garage, but I, I really, I can't spend time out there. Yep. There's one last thing I want to say based on your comment was one of my favorite things to do. I, I love drawing the potential out of people. And again, I don't sell seminars, man. So I'm not like trying to get up here and say, well, buy my program because I'm going to make you great. I really though love talking to someone. I just did this the other day. Um, I'm, I'm part of the Michael Blank program. He's, he's an awesome person and yeah. I, I'm part of his program, right? And so we... I, somebody called me that was looking into his program and they were asking me, Chris, this, Chris, that, what, you know, what, what, what should I do? Should I? And I was telling them, I, I said, it's not even about the program. It's about, do you have it in you to execute? Mm -hmm. Are you right. going to get up every day and dedicate the time? Are you going to analyze the deals? Are you going to network with people? Well, I, he says, I can't, I can't network because I, you know, my job and I, you know, I don't want people to know that I'm, I'm doing this thing. I said, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. 
I mean, you're not, you're not jumping on top of the entire state building and like screaming from the top of your lungs. Like I'm a real estate investor. And even if you did, who cares? You're progressing in your life, but don't, right. don't you keep putting these limiting beliefs in front of you. You're never going to put your foot forward. Right. So start focusing on your abilities and tell yourself, I will do it. I can do it. Otherwise don't even waste your time. Don't right. sign up for anyone's program. Right. Because yeah. if you're not going to put in the work, you're not going to get there. And believe me, you're exactly right. You hit the nail on the head. You said, you know, all oh, these guys, you know, they see these cars, they see these jets, they see this, they see that. You know, I don't care if it's Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Bill, any of these people. A lot of these people never graduated high school. Right. They didn't have college degrees. They were not born with success. Jim Carrey was, hum was homeless. I mean, what an amazing comedian, right? He was yeah. homeless, man. And, and there's a lot of people like that, right? So I tell people, quit focusing on all the doubting. And understand that most of the successful people in the world, even if they are driving a Bentley, were probably broke, possibly homeless, definitely struggled, possibly depressed. So once you get your head wrapped around all of that, let's go. Yeah. And let's let's move forward and let's rock right. and roll because no we're all excuses. capable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I love exactly. it. Yeah. I can listen yep. all day. Well, so, so yeah. Yeah, tell talk, I was gonna say talk about multifamily. I'm sure that's what you were gonna say, Randon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk, uh, you, you got into the Michael Blank program. Talk to us about what made you choose that, and 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 kind of why you're gearing towards multifamily. Sure, sure. Uh, so I knew that the natural progression for me would be to scale up, whether it was going to be in commercial triple net type properties or going to be in the multifamily space, and I just wasn't quite sure when how things are fine in my single family space and my businesses and, and I keep all the balls in the air just fine. Uh, but, but I, it, there was this burning thing inside me that was kind of saying, you know, this is hard work. I mean, even though I manage people, I have other people that do stuff for me now, you know, they'll go and they'll fix a property or they'll go do this stuff. It's still a grind and it's, you know, it's stressful. It's in the back of your mind. And I started researching and I, I'm, I'm a contributor technically on bigger pockets. I, I blogged posted once on there uh, and I want to put more on there. It's just time, right? And I, I, I got a lot of information from Brandon and all those guys. He's actually from my neck of the woods over here in Washington. And um, started hearing more about the multifamily. I actually heard Michael Blank on uh, one of the podcasts and was intrigued by just his attitude and how much he was willing to give. He just really seemed like he was willing to offer a lot of information to people for free while a lot of people were selling constantly. Now, not that he's not selling, he's got things to sell. That's how he makes a living. Right. But, but he's offering a lot more than he's selling, if that makes sense. Yep. And yep. so, so I'll tell you this and you, you, you may not even believe this. I, so I was, I was listening to him. I got off and I'd heard him before, but this was a new podcast. I heard, I researched him online got online, bought his shorter program that gets like an SDA and, and some other stuff, mastermind stuff or whatever. I, I, through the whole weekend, it was, I think maybe 16 hours worth of material that whole weekend. This was a Friday. I listened to every module and I wrote notes and I went through the whole program. It's supposed to take obsessed. like, obsessed. Yeah. Obsessed. I'm like, I've got to learn all of this just like wow. I did with the real estate books. Right. I had, I was going on vacation that next week. And I flew out to go on vacation and I had talked to one of his mentor folks right before I left. I just reached out on LinkedIn, got a hold of him, asked him a few questions. He said, you know, we have this event that's going on out here. You should just check it out. It's really actually an event that goes through the SDA and stuff. It's not a selling event, really. It's just teaches you how to use the tools. I diverted my business flight that was going out there. So that next weekend after I landed, I flew out to that event. And then that next Monday, I drove to my business meeting, right? Which was on the other side of the country. Okay. Hmm. Seattle all the way over to DC. I signed up shortly thereafter for the mentor program because I wanted to bring someone alongside me to assist me in doing our, our bigger deals, right? Not that I couldn't have done it on my own. I was, I, I had the confidence, but I wanted that extra security, just that little extra. Here's a bunch of people that have done it. They've got all this experience. Um, and, 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 uh, and it, it's, it, it's kind of like a bigger part of a team versus just, I'm just going to go it alone. And maybe it takes two years. We could get this done faster. Now I'll tell you shortly thereafter, I built my social media platforms, the websites, all this stuff, and actually landed a deal. It's, you know, we're under contract, but we're not, we're not offering yet uh, for 112 units as a result of the networking and the grinding. This was not a direct result, full disclosure of the mentor program. This was a result of the networking through Michael Blank's 
networking program. Oh, that's amazing. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's he's, a huge he's great. First deal. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so I got together with a group of people that were really out of his other programs and we got to talking and I, I'm still on board with the program. I'm in the mentor program and I love it and the mentors are great, but, but, um, but it was through my grit and constant communication with people yeah. and just getting myself out there on zoom calls and talking with Stuart and just, you know, trying to get out there that all of a sudden people start noticing, wait, this guy's a little different. He's not mm. just somebody who sits on here for three years and throws one line out there. I want to add value, amazing. add value. So, so let me ask you this. You said it wasn't yeah. a direct um, result of the mentoring program, but, have you brought this deal to your mentor to, to basically reassure you that this is a deal that you should be in on? Well, I, I did not bring it to him to say, is this the deal I should be in on? Mm-hmm. I had made the decision. I was, I was in. Um, what I did do though, because now I have that available to me, which is exactly why I signed up, was, the, was, was to be able to bounce those things off. So yes, now I'm, I'm having these conversations. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you right. think about that? And we have a sponsor and we have a team. I mean, combined, the five of us have almost 3,000 units that we either own or are on or are invested in. So we're, we're a capable team right. of single family, wow. multifamily, syndicated deals. I mean, we all, but yes, absolutely. So now where the rubber meets the road for the mentor program, for me anyways, is now that we've got this thing moving to have that support and that structure and all of that. So it's all good. Again, I just don't want to, I don't want to sell somebody on something because they got to make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. I just wanted people to know that it's not just having a program. It's the work ethic behind the program that's going to make you successful, right? That's it. You can lead a, what is it? You can lead a horse to the stream, but you can't make them drink. That's the, yeah, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So it. tell, if, if you can tell us a little yeah. bit about this deal. I mean, uh, you, you found yeah. it networking and it's 112 yeah. units, I think you said. Yeah. So again, we're not, we haven't put an offering out yet, but, but basically what it is, is we have a situation where uh, a, a local individual knew a broker and had the relationship and it was a pocket deal that was thrown our way. And uh, he had the wherewithal to lock the deal up with another gentleman um, so that, you know, we could get this thing under contract. They did that, brought me in, um, brought another sponsor in. And then we have a daughter of another individual who is also a broker and is really good with just the analytics and the ground and pound stuff. So there's technically five of us, probably four of us in the deal, but five technically. And all of us have strengths. Mine is really investor relations, CRM, legal, syndication, all of that, right? Platforms. Uh, One person does reno and has a lot of experience in that space. Another individual really loves the banking and the spreadsheets and the SDA. And then we have a sponsor who has the overall experience in, you know, hundreds and hundreds of units with multiple buildings that uh, obviously understands how these deals work from front to back. So it's a really good team that's been put together. And we have an individual who is at retirement age and she's ready to just move on. And this is a tremendous value add. I, I can't get into details, but I can tell you it's, it's a tremendous value add. And, and I'll just tell you this. I'll tell you that the rents have not been raised in 10 years. Wow. Okay. So, it. so that's just one, one of the value adds. You guys are going to so, make some money. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, we're very excited. And as I said, by the time I get, um, by the time I get all of my documentation ready and, and launched, we're very excited for the opportunity to to bring people in. Uh, we just have to get some of our, uh, some of our details back, but it's really fun, really exciting. And all of that happened within literally a few weeks of just putting yourself out there and just saying, here's how I can add value. Let's rock. And, and, and everyone it. just getting together. That's, that's, so cool. that's awesome. And I, I can tell you're excited about it too, which is, love which it. is great. So we'd love to hear, hear about it once it's closed and you guys are totally. doing well on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so what's, what's your goal for the future with multifamily? I mean, you, you know, what do you see yourself doing in that, yeah. that industry? So I'll give you my short term and then my long term quickly. Yeah. So my short term, which is what I told Michael, actually, when I met him, I said, I want to build my social media platform, right? I want to get a deal under contract. And I want to generate a million dollars from investor partners. Okay. I wanted to do that by the end of the year. So that was a two and a half month goal. And I'm almost there. Okay. Wow. So that was my short term goal. My long term goal was to invest in um, over 1,000 units in, in, to partner in um, 300 units in a year. Okay. 100 units by the end of the year. 
So I've, I've almost hit that technically. So it was 300 by the end of the year. Um, and then I've also, I'm a, I'm a passive investor in lots of different things, including multifamily. So really where I want to go is I want to go into syndication. I love teaching actually. That's, I'm very passionate about bringing people along through the path. I went the journey that I took. And so I, I, that's my passion, honestly, when I retire or as I get through this multifamily world, I want to teach people. I want to help people. I mean, I just really enjoy it. You can tell there's a lot of passion that's yeah. genuine. I mean, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm this way all the time. Uh, and, and so that's, that's my long-term goal is to teach people and to, and to, you know, hold thousands of units just so I can, you know, give back and, and have financial freedom and such. I love it. That's awesome. So uh, usually we do this towards the end, but I think, you know, your story is, is pretty intriguing. So talk to us about your book a little bit, where we can get your book and, uh, and all that. And the, you said it go, all the proceeds go to charity. So what, sure. what charity is it going to? Sure. So the book is, uh, you've earned it how I refused anything less than success and you can too. And the book was written to help young people to get through a lot of the challenges that I went through and just to show them that there is a path to success. You just have to believe and you have to understand that all these little things that happen to you throughout life are just tiny little moments and that your life is so much bigger. So I wrote this, the story uh, kind of really to help those people. But then I start telling the story of, building a sales career and real estate and success and saving money. And I give tips and tricks and things on how you can do that. So it is a catch all for anybody, but that's the book. You can get it on Amazon. I have it in audiobook. I, I actually really, really like the audiobook. The narrator, it wasn't me. I uh, did a really good job on the audiobook. We have a Spanish version in ebook, regular that's ebook awesome. and then paperback. Yeah. It'll run you that's cool. three bucks for ebook and 12 bucks for paperback and 100% indefinitely goes to charity. So from day one, we've given all the proceeds to charity. I partnered with Feeding America as an enterprise partner where every dollar I donate through the book sales, Tony Robbins will then match every dollar, right? So our money's wow. going twice as far. Right. right. Yeah. And then last month, um, I'm on there, I think permanently, uh, but last month they added me to the national website for Feeding America under partners where it says um, why I give so it's my story with my picture and then a bunch of detail on why I give back and all of that. And so we really partnered with Feeding America. It's just been amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think we fed 52,000 people so far. So That's amazing. I love that's that. That's incredible. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And I'm going to buy the book and make sure that, you know, make sure you get your copy too. So, can, you know, even if you don't read it. Yeah. You know, you're helping somebody out. So that's awesome. Give it to a young person. It's yeah, PG, uh, I swear. Absolutely. <laughs> It's well, Chris, stuff. I could listen to this all day, to be honest with you. I mean, I've got so many questions to ask, but for the sake of time, we'll, we'll jump into our moments of truth. It's sure. the same seven questions that we ask all of our guests. And the first one here, who's your success role model? Uh, well, my success role model is my direct success role model, which is Ron Norgan. He's that individual who took the time to, to help me in life. And, and just, I mean, really nobody paid attention to me. He's the only person that just saw an opportunity to, to help me be successful and, and took that time. Um, if I was to look at some of these other role models out there, I would say it'd probably be somebody like a Tony Robbins. There's, there's a lot of them out there, but I would say probably like a Tony Robbins, who is not just a business person, but also understands the psychology behind what can help you to be successful, changing your state and all of that. I've been to four of his events um, and uh, he's definitely inspired me and actually helped me save a lot of money throughout the years. So so yeah, nice. probably Tony Robbins and my personal mentor, Ron. That's great. What is your biggest success? You know, my biggest success, honestly, is, is the day I got married to my wife. And the reason I say that is because I told myself I would never get married. You know, I, I, I don't I have a family. I still tell myself that. Yeah. Yeah. I told myself I'd never get married and I, I don't have a really tight family structure. I love my family, but I'm not really tight because we moved around so much. And so the, the reason for that is my wife, uh, the special person she is, really helped ground me and, and, and keep me on the right path when I was, is, was in a position in life where I could have really gotten derailed, started making a little money and just, she yeah. really helped ground me and teach me the value of education. Matter of fact, I went back because of her and got my GED and, and took a college course and like she has a master's degree and just, she really changed my life for the positive. So um, there are obviously lots of things I could say, but, but truthfully the, the shift in my life, the most positive was, was the day I got married to her. 
That's really cool. That's awesome. I guess it's uh, my turn. What uh, what does a typical day for you look like? Man, I literally don't have a typical day. <laughs> my days are so all over the place. I'll give you an example. Today, we're going to be passing out gifts to a lot of the clients, fun day, but I'll probably make a few sales calls. I'll be on the phones. I've got some calls coming in today that are scheduled with investors. So that'll happen throughout the day. You know, Calendly calls that are coming in in between my appointments. Okay. Nice. Um, yeah, I might get calls. Uh, I might get calls from a tenant that somehow got through the, the firewall and got a hold of me. Of course, I then have to divert them to the maintenance people or whoever. That's so funny. because I'm an entre- yeah, because I'm an entrepreneur, man, and I'm reachable. I, I actually really like that human contact. I like to be able to talk to people. I like them reaching me. Obviously, I so, only have so much time, but my day can be very chaotic, and my day is not my own. I, I most of my days are ten to twelve hour days. Mo- most of them. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. I love it. So I right. don't have a normal day. I'm on the road for several hours. I'm taking phone calls, dealing with investors, building platforms. You name what it. time do you wake up? Stuff. I wake up about 5.45 to 6 every day. Okay. Yeah. And I go to bed somewhere between 10 and 11.30. It just depends. Okay. And again, it depends on how early I'm getting up. Sometimes I'm up at 4.30. So I might go to bed at you know 10.30, that kind of thing, right? Yep, right. yep, yep. Cool. Next question is, what's your favorite quote? You know, I... I've got a lot of them. What I, if I could, I'd like to give you my mantra. Would that be yeah. okay? Yeah. Absolutely. So I have a lot of quotes. I love, I love tons of them. Yeah. Like I see Jack the Canfield. background on your, your video oh, here. Oh, there's just, yeah. yeah. I, I, both my offices, I have a sound room. That's where I'm at right now, but okay. my sound room and then I have an office and they're just full of ins- inspirational That's, things. I love so, that. yeah. So, so my mantra in life is that I am not a victim of my environment or my circumstances, but I am the results of my actions and my attitude. And I don't have time for fear in my life because I'm out achieving my dreams. Oh. And that's my mantra. I, I live by that yeah, every that's good. day. Yeah. And I have lots of quotes, but that right there is what is singed in me. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's and I, really it, 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 I can tell that that's what's in you based off of you know, here, listening to you talk and, and your, right. just your attitude about everything, which is, which is great. Yeah. So what are some of your hobbies? I know you mentioned a few of them earlier. Yeah. I, I I wish I had more time <laughs> to utilize my hobbies because I am really passionate uh, and I'm kind of a, I'm passionate about, you know, high energy, crazy things. Like I love mountain climbing. I've climbed all the Northwest volcanoes, Rainier and a bunch of others. Uh, I love scuba diving. I'm an advanced rescue scuba diver. I love golf, uh, but I haven't golfed in two years. I haven't scuba dove in like five months. I haven't mountain climbed in two years. Uh, and part of that is because I am, It's hard to explain, but there is something that has ticked in me or clicked in me or turned on in this multifamily space, in this entrepreneurial space that I just have this desire inside to just create. And and so the social media platforms, the websites, all the things I've been doing lately, all of my free time has gone into that seven days a week after I, after I do my primary businesses, right? Uh, You know, selling furniture, doing different things like that. So um, someday I'll get back to those hobbies, but they're sitting there collecting dust for now. Got it. Got it. What's the best business book that you've read? Oh man, there are so many business books. For sure. Are. Um, yeah, I, I got to think about that for a second. I know, you know, matter of fact, hold on. I have three millionaire mind books that are behind me. Yep. Those are three of my favorite books that are, they're actually stacked up behind me. Um, and I would say that the reason, you know, millionaire mind and, and um, what's the other one? Oh, Carl, Carl, Harv Eckert. Harv Eckert is one of my favorite books. Um, and then How to Win Friends and Influence People and Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, so I know I gave you three books, but yeah, it's all good. I, yeah, I like the, the philosophy concept stuff, not the, hey, if you read this, you're going to be rich. Right. I, I like the things that will kind of build upon themselves and, and, and help build strategy. And so those three books were probably three of my favorite. Among, I read probably, I'd say about 10 books a year. That's all. Nice. I've read That's the Seven great. Habits one. I like. It's a great book. I just bought the uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. So I'm excited for to people. read them. All. Yeah, yeah. Great book for people. So, last question here. If there's one key piece of advice you could leave our listeners with about achieving success, what do you think it would be? Yeah, you know, this is a good one. Um, I would say get out of your own way. You know, I have all these little quotes about you know, don't be half full. You know, be the universe around the glass and you know, uh, um, uh, 
uh, what's his name? Um, Eric Thomas. He talks about, you know, when you want to breathe, when you want success more than you want to breathe, mm. then you'll be successful. Love, that. love yep. that. I got goosebumps when I just said that. I swear to you. I love that. When, when you think that way, you will be successful. And so what I would tell people is quit thinking about all the things you can't do and quit listening to all the people around you because it's likely most of those people, they don't have it in them. Not, right. not that they couldn't. They just they can't see it. They don't want it. They, they're busy. They, they can't get out of their own way. That's okay because there, are, there is a one percenter rule out there and not everybody can be successful right? Not everybody can be passionate, enthusiastic and all that stuff. That's so, right. you know, yeah. So, I mean, I would just say, just focus on you, put one foot in front of the other and incrementally build your success through action. Don't listen to everybody else and just keep going, keep moving. Cause it's mm. going to be really hard to fail if you're moving forward. That's hey, great. Man. And if you fall, you're going to be falling forward too. Absolutely. So, that's yeah. awesome. I yeah. love it. Well, Chris, this has been this has been great. Uh, and like I said, I think we can we could talk to you for hours. But how, how awesome. can our listeners get in contact with you? Uh, you can reach me at sterlingrhinocapital.com. That's my website for my syndications. Um, you can reach me at Chris D. Roberts, which is the website for the book, or you can find me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a good way. If you get on there and you want to reach out, I'll I'll respond back to you. I'm I'm very active on social media, um, but those are some of the places you can reach me. Absolutely. I love it. Well, for our listeners, make sure to go out, buy his book. It's called You've Earned It. Find it on Amazon. Like you said, all the proceeds are going to charity. That's awesome. And uh, connect with uh, connect with Chris. And if you get any questions about multifamily or, or any investment opportunities, Chris is your guy for, for Multifamily Monday. Again, Chris, we appreciate you being on the show today. Well, and Brandon, I really appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity to tell my story. I hope I've inspired a few people today and you guys have a great day, man. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Chris.